Hello underwater photographers, I'm Brent Durand and I shoot a lot of underwater photos. Today we're going to talk about five tips for basic composition. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you find this video useful and informative. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for subscribing. I hope you also find this useful and informative. And before we get started, I'd like to say a big thanks to Sea Life. They are sponsoring this tutorial, so all these tips come courtesy of them. Definitely check out Sea Life cameras and Sea Dragon lighting systems at your local dive shop. So let's get started. And tip number one, this is to fill the frame with your subject. And as we're swimming along, dum dum dum, you know, blowing some bubbles, we might see a subject shoot and move on. That's not gonna get us the best photo. It might get us a, a salad bowl shot. We're like, oh, there's a nudibranch in there. Oh yeah, upper left corner. You know, we're, we're gonna see the subject, but that's not what we want. We want to get as close as possible with the camera in order to fill the frame. So all the extra space in the frame should disappear as we zero in on the subject. And what that's gonna do is create emphasis on the subject. As a viewer, we're gonna know exactly what we're looking at, and it's going to also result in bolder, more vivid colors, and a crisper image because we're getting rid of water between us and the subject. So the closer we can get, the better the image will be, because one, it's larger in the frame, but two, less water, so it's gonna be a clearer, crisper image, and our lights are actually gonna do a lot better job because we're a lot closer to the subject and shooting through less water. And tip number two, so this is to face your subject or have the subject face you, but generally you're gonna to wanna to face your subject. You know, they're sitting there, you swim around to the front side of the subject. Sometimes it's if it's a fish, like a damselfish, they'll swim towards you and you can wait for those, those shots um, with them facing you. But otherwise, move yourself around. You see something um, like a nudibranch and uh, it's swimming towards, or swimming, it's crawling towards a hole in the reef or into a crack or crevice. You know, yeah, there's a branchial plume and the nudibranch tail, its little butt sticking up there, but that's not gonna be the best photo. Just swim on, move along, look for something that is facing you. Maybe come back to that nudibranch later and it's crawled up a ledge and now you can see its face and shoot from the front. But as you're swimming around, look for those shots where the front of the subject is. So move around, you know, shoot from different angles. Just because you're swimming from this way doesn't mean you have to shoot from this way. Maybe swim all the way around, do a 180 to shoot your subject um, from the front. And that's gonna create a much better photo. The best example example is do you want a fish tail or do you want a fish face when you're shooting those photos. So keep that in mind and your photos will automatically connect with the viewer because now we know exactly what we're looking at. We see the face which helps create a portrait and a sense of expression and character within the subject. And tip number three. So this feeds right off of those other two, which is eye contact. So we wanna get close, we wanna see the face of the subject, but what we really, really want is that eye contact. And just think about any other portrait you see in a magazine, you know, checking out at the grocery store, or you know, whatever it might be, on social media, models, um, animals, that sort of thing. When you have that eye contact, it really speaks to you. You know, we walk down the street and we connect with other humans by looking at them in the eye. So as a viewer of a photo, we want to see that eye contact and if that eye is looking into the lens, it all of a sudden becomes very personal for us. Sometimes there's going to be expression and a mood and different stuff you can get from larger mammals, um, especially, you know, I don't know how much mood you're going to get from a shrimp or a crab, but that eye contact is certainly really important. And that's what's going to help make your photo stand out. So when you're looking for a subject, look at those eyes. Make sure those eyes are well lit. Make sure they're close and they're prominent. Sometimes you can see through the corneas of the eyes, which is pretty cool. So you can light through them and maybe see the black background behind them. And if they're nice and sharp, that just takes a, your photo to a whole nother like wow level. If it's something like a seahorse, wait for that eye to look towards you. They oftentimes like to look away and look up and you know, they're, they're a little shy, especially if you have that focus light you know, blurring down on them. So wait for them to look at you and then take that shot then because you're gonna get that eye looking at you. And of course, there's ways to Photoshop different eyes and make them point different directions and clean them up. But you know, we're trying to shoot great photos and not be Photoshop whizzes. Wait to capture that photo correctly in the camera and then you're gonna get a lot better results that, that you can then work with in post-production. So keep an eye on those eyes. 
And tip number four. So this is swim space. And this rule ties in quite a bit with the rule of thirds, although I like to always refer to it as swim space because sometimes that rule of thirds gets busted and, and it is interpreted in a different way. But essentially what you want is for the front of the subject, especially its face, to have some open water that it can swim into or breathe into in your frame. So oftentimes with a fish or a crab, you'll have the subject taking up two thirds of the frame with its face in that center third, and then the last third will be open space. So it can swim into there, it could open its mouth. Um, you can see a little bit um, what it might be looking at on that side or have that open space as it looks off or whether it looks to you. But swim space is a great way to describe it because it can actually swim forward a little bit in the frame versus having its nose squished towards the edge of the the frame, which will give you some sort of subconscious angst. You know, it just doesn't feel as pleasing um, with the image. You know, you're crunched. Is it going out of the frame? Is it looking out of the frame? You know, what, what's happening with that subject? If you can push it back and leave that, that swim space or that leading space, then it's going to be a lot more pleasing composition overall. And the last tip, number five, that's actually six. So that is five. And this is to review your images when you're shooting. As you're going along on your trip and shooting, you know, one dive goes by, now a whole day with four to five dives goes by, all of a sudden a week goes by and now you're at home again. If you've been making a mistake, guess what? You've made it the whole trip and that's that. So by reviewing the images after every photo and in between dives and every evening on the computer, we can really start to see, hey, you know, I don't like where my lighting is on that. You know, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense for me. Or, you know, hey, I was missing the focus. Or, I need to do this or that or get closer, you know, fill the frame, create more eye contact, that sort of thing. You know, review those images after every shot. So hit that playback button. It's that triangle that you'll see on your camera housing and that will let you go through um, and review the images. On a lot of cameras, you can hit display or info and that will cycle through the histogram and some other charts and data that you can also use to gauge exposure and kind of see what's going on with the other elements of the photo, sometimes color channels as well. Um, so it's all really useful info and as you zoom in, you can see things like uh, backscatter or other particulate that might be messing up the image if we're striving for our eye contact we might see a hydroid that's blocking a piece of the eye. So we definitely want to recompose the scene to get rid of that hydroid and make sure we're not seeing it or at least that it's not blocking the eye of the subject. So when we're reviewing our images after every shot, we're able to make those corrections. And that's it, those are our five tips. I hope you found them useful. Again, thank you to Sea Life for sponsoring this video tutorial. Hope to see you guys back for the next one.